Let's, uh, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day of Shabbat. Thank you for your word. We put this time of Torah talk before you, Lord. And may, may our words be good before your throne. May be you teaching us, Lord. Blessed are you, Adonai, who sanctified us with your commandments and commanded us to study your words. In the name of Yeshua. Amen. Okay. Today we're going to study oath, 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 vows, and swearing. And what is uh, what is it mean? You know, the primary lesson that we learn today in our portion, Matot, uh, Masay, Numbers chapter thirty, uh, we find uh, in regards to vows and oaths, is that God considered these vows to be a binding. And he expressed that those who take the vows, uh, in the, those who do it with sincere intention to fulfill them, they are binding to their promise. So we can see that in the book of Numbers chapter 30, where it says, Then Moshe spoke to the heads, heads of the tribes of concerning the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord had com has commanded. If a man makes a vow, to the Lord, or swears and no, to bind himself by some agreement, he shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that he, uh, all that proceeds out of his mouth. So we see here that two words, vow and oath. So what is the difference? between both of them. And that's what we're going to study today. You know, the, the first um, word, oh, a vow, is neder in Hebrew. And it's, uh, the word in Hebrew for oath is shav shavua. Okay. Don't confuse that with the word for a week, which is Shabua. It's different Shabua than Shabua. And it's an obligation. Both of them are obligation or agreement. Now, there are um, these two terms are, are distinct from each other. Or they're either distinct from each other, oath and vow, nether and shavua. Either they are syn synonymous to each other or they distinguish from each other. That's what we're going to see how the Bible uses this and how um, Moshe used these words to describe the same activity. So the, sa the sages make a clear distinction between these terms. And that's what we're going to um, study today. But there are areas in the Bible where these two uh, terms overlap to each other. So let's study uh, both of them. The vow or nether is generally understood as a dedication of something or someone to the sanctuary. And this is demonstrated by the vow that Yaakov made in Genesis 28 says, then Yaakov made a vow saying, if, if God will be with me and keep me in this way that I'm going and give me bread to eat and clothing to put on so that I come back to my father's house in peace, then you see the difference here? The when we have this vow, it is, is the nether is two words. If it's conditional. If God do something to me, then the Lord shall be my God. And this stone which I uh, have set as a pillar shall be God's house. And all, all that you give me, I will surely give you a tenth to you. And there is another uh, example, example in Numbers 21 uh, with the people of Israel says, so Israel made a vow to the Lord and said, if you will indeed deliver these people into my hand, then 
I will utterly destroy their cities. And Judges chapter 11, we find another example. It says, and Jephthah made a vow to the Lord and said, if you will indeed deliver these people of Ammon into my hand, then I will be that whatever comes. It will be that whatever comes. In this you know, story, he uh, offered his, um, his daughter to the Lord. And there are discussions that, that he really offered uh, his daughter or, daughter or to a sacrifice to God or just simply she, he offered his daughter to the service of the sanctuary. There were sometimes some ladies that were helping the Levites in some tasks. So there's the, there are this discussion right there. We find another example in 1 Samuel chapter 1 to 11, where it says, Then she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look at the affliction of your uh, maidservant and remember me and not forget your maidservant, but we'll give, uh, but we'll give your maidservant a male, ch a male child. Then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life, and no razor shall come upon his head. There is another example in Second Samuel chapter fifteen. Also, he says, "For your servant took a vow while I dwelt in Gash uh, Geshur in Syria, saying, if." The Lord indeed brings me back to Jerusalem, then I will serve the Lord. So in these examples, a vow has continually attached to it. So if you, Adonai, will grant X, then I will dedicate Y to the sanctuary. Okay? But always there is a condition, if you do something, I will do something. Thus, in our text, the vow is especially made to Adonai, meaning that the vow involves giving something to Adonai. That is why Leviticus chapter 7 introduced a type of peace offering called vow offering or a nether offering. It says, but if the sacrifice of his offering is a vow or a voluntary offering, it shall be eaten the same day that he offers his sacrifice, but on the next day, the reminder of it also may be eaten. So the vow involves bringing something. So Leviticus 27 discusses various types of formal vows that a person may uh, make to the temple regarding uh, animals, uh, property, or even one's uh, self. And this is very interesting chapter for future study in regards to the vow, you know, uh, vow by valuation. We talk about the vow based on the value of a person. When the person dedicates themselves to the Lord, there is a value of every person. It's very interesting why the Bible put a value of every person. So that's, that's a future study that must be interesting. So another type of vow substitutes uh, a personal prohibition in the place of a sacrifice. For example, one can say, if the Lord will rescue me from this storm, then I will quit drinking coffee. Now, without a temple today, we, one can vow to bring a sacrifice, but the coffee thing will stand. So that's, that's um, kind of vow. When, when you abstain from something to the Lord or you offer something to the Lord, and that, you know, we don't have temple or something like that, but for sure, if you promise something to God, you, you better fulfill what you have promised to Him. Okay, that's in regards to the word uh, vow. Any question? We have people here. Who's here this time? Judy, Linda. Let me see in the YouTube. We have Vicky. Uh, Vicky's asking who is singing. Oh, that's a friend of mine called Adam Ben Joshua Vicky. That's why I play the music because I don't have any copyright problem with him. <laughs> that's a friend of mine. He has been in our community in the past. So, um, any questions, connections, people? Talk. I can hear anybody. Hello? Well, uh, you know, 
a vow is a vow. I mean, I don't know what would you ask about it. Yeah, the, 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 sometimes the people say, well, uh, how can we make, make a vow if we don't have temple? But about, even if you don't have temple, the, the emphasis is, is what well, you promised to God, like I was explaining yeah. to somebody today. Even if we don't have temple, the spirit of the Lord is there and is eternal. You know, God and make his law and his law is eternal. And he says, I'm the same today. I mean, in, in yesterday, today, and forever. So that's the concern of the vow. Now, what is it? Oh, when, well, when I was young, I, you know, like a lot of kids, I made vows. If he would help me through a bad time for whatever reason, even if it was my own fault, you know, I'd stop doing this or stop doing that. And of course, I stopped it for a while. But that was really before I had a relationship with God, you know? Yeah. It's just that I knew God, and I went to church uh, about every week. But, you know, it still wasn't the same. I don't, you know, you have to ask for forgiveness for it because you didn't keep the vow. But. Yeah, it doesn't matter what, what you promise him. If, if we have temper or not, we need to fulfill what it comes out of our mouth. That's what Yeshua said. That's why Yeshua says, um, better for your uh, yes be yes and your no be no. You know? That was one thing I never quite understood. Well, yeah, your yes should be yes and your no should be no. But what would be the, I, I don't know what would be the other. What would be different than that? What would be other than yes or no? I'm not quite following it. Yes, it's like uh, he wants us to be one word. You know, when a person, when you, uh, he says, do not swear for you. We're going to see that later, but when, do not swear for your rules, Salim, because the people try to, you know, uh, to assure what they're saying at that time by swearing, not swear for the temple that, is this, that this is truth. And Yeshua is explaining that if you're of man or a woman of one word, and a good testimony, you don't even need to swear for nothing. Oh, be, yes be yes and your no be no and may okay. you not may you be known by that you know yeah. if you say I'll, I'll be there you know and then you don't you don't go you don't show up or things like that so the messiah is, is he's encouraging us to uh be of, of be people of one word and fulfill what we said you know i remember that my grandma in the past she told me that in the past, in the day of old, people don't make much contracts. But what the word was value, the word of a people, they said value, you know, say, I'm going to be there or I'm going to pay you this that day. They did it because the word have more value at that time. Well, now, is that the difference between a vow and an oath? That a vow, you're making it, say, to God? But an oath, well, you make an, you make an oath to God too, don't you? Yeah, the vow is more than a, a, a conditional. If you do this, I'll do that. Let's see the difference. Let's go with the oath. The oath, uh, the, the word is in Hebrew, Shavua, also evokes a solemn or formal declaration or promise. The person making an oath claims, God is my, is my witness. You see? So the oath in, uh, uh, implies a witness. And a character in the biblical text might make an oath to the effect. They will say, may the Lord deal with me if I don't do such and such. So the oath involves God. So the Bible right. contains numerous, numerous examples of how the speaker formulates an oath. Abraham, for example, sealed his covenant with Abimelech by taking an oath. Let's see that. It says in Genesis 21, 30, uh, 31 says, Therefore, he called that place Beersheba. Well, of oh, you know, Beersheba from Shavua. Oh, because the two of them swore an oath there. So and you that, see was, that was an oath between God and Abraham. That was two people making an oath. Yeah, that was two people making an oath, but involving the, the name of God, like swearing that I'm not going to break this oath, you know, in the name of God. And they swear by God or they swear by the temple. You know, Yeshua will criticize that attitude in the future 
or he will uh, give the right interpretation, the right spirit of that in the future. So let's see that. So in Genesis 24, Abraham's servants took an oath to find a wife for Isaac. And in several places, God promises an oath to give the land uh, of Israel to the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Also in Genesis 22, God swears by himself to bless Abraham with a covenant. He promised. Let's see that one. It says, and, and Genesis 22, 22, 16 says, and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not uh, withheld your son, your only son, blessing, I will bless you. And multiply, I will multiply your descendants as their stars of heaven and as the sin which is not, uh, which is on the shore, seashore. And your descendants shall possess the gates of their enemies. That author, you know, the author of Hebrews, explains this text in, in this way. Let's see how uh, the author of Hebrews says that. He says, For when God make a promise to Abraham because he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely blessing I will bless you, and multiplying I will multiply you. You see? Verse 15 says, And so after he has eventually endured and obtained the promise for men in this swear by the for men indeed swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is for them an end of a dispute. So that's the difference. An oath is when the people, when somebody swear, you know, by the greater. What is the greater? Well, by God, which is greater than the human being. All they swear by heaven, which represents God. All they swear by the temple which represents God, okay? So they swear by the temple because it doesn't so that uh, delicate of, of uh, uh, big to swear by God. So instead of using the name of God, they say, well, I swear by the temple, which is, this, which is the same thing. Or the people say, may heavens, may heaven, that expression heavens uh, relates to God. Is, I don't know how to call that anachronism. I don't know if that's the right word. Uh, when they use one word in replacement to the other, but it's, it means the same thing. So you, you will find that expression a lot. But the, uh, the author of Hebrews explained that uh, good in verse 16. For men indeed, indeed swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is for them the end of dispute. The end of dispute, you, you see, when the person at that time, when the people says, well, uh, show me the proof. And the people say, I swear by such and such, you know, temple, heavens of God, that is true. And that will put end to the dispute. Why? Because that was very delicate to falsely swear for in that, at that time. So that's the, basically the difference between a an, vow and an oath in the Bible, neither and she, Shevua. So people took oaths to, provoke, uh, to, to prove their honest, honesty in a matter of dispute. Sometimes a rabbinical court of law even require a person giving testimony to make an oath or an oath for confirmation is for them the, uh, and then of all dispute. So the Talmud discusses oath in a great length and even devote an entire tractate to the subject called Shavuot or oath. In Hebrew, there is a tractate in the Talmud called um, Shavuot. You want to say something? You want to say something, somebody? <laughs> yeah, I was just looking it up, and it's somewhere in the Bible. It tells us not to swear on anything, not to swear on... Um, how does it go? Yeah, yeah, we're going to get there, Linda. We're going to get there because okay. that's what I'm telling you, that Yeshua gave the, the right interpretation of that. Now, the obligation or dedication in Hebrew is sar, the matter to which a person swears whether to perform some act or to prohibit himself from something is called isar. The verb asar from the uh, verb asar means to bind something. And isar is something bound to a person, on a person. A person making a vow binds himself with a, with a isar. 
whether he has bound himself from drinking coffee or obligated himself to bring a sacrifice, whatever. Now, the Torah makes it clear that uh, what one speaks in terms of a vow or oath or an obligation, he is required to fulfill it. Now, the sages, however, were aware to the, of the difficulties of, uh, that involves oath and obligation presented in the normal uh, course of daily life. And they develop an, an, an elaborate system of nulling and nulling vows. This is interesting. Yet they were well aware of the solemnity, uh, solemnity of the vows and did much within their power to discourage them since they recognized their binding nature, they said just allowed to annulment of the kind of vow, uh, uh, four kind of vows. The number one is the vow of in, incitement made under some uh, from distress, you know, when some person is under distress. Yes. Another kind of vow that they, uh, the people can nullify is vows with exaggeration, you know, or vows uh, made in error. And the fourth one is a vow uh, broken under constraint. Now, yet, even in developing a, a working scheme by which a nomination of a vow is allowed, the sages recognize that they were treating uh, and thin eyes. The absolution of vow, however, in the air, for it has nothing to, nothing in the Torah upon which to depend. That's what they said, you know. That's what we, in Value of Blessing, we are very careful in Yom Kippur to the absolution of vows. Because in the Mishnah, Hag in 1 8, the Mishnah says, the absolution of vows, however, I'm, not I'm sorry, the absolution of vows hover, hovers, hovers in the air. That means that don't have nothing. Because it has nothing in the Torah upon which to depend. So, why we you should use the nullifying of vows in Yom Kippur when it's not biblical? That has been a question. We stopped uh, doing it that years ago. Now, they uh, were simply trying to find a way to maintain a society in which vows on the one hand, were to be taken seriously, and on the other hand, presenting impossible cases to adjudicate within the society. It was for this reason that the sages discouraged the use of personal vows. I would think I would think they would discourage vows because people don't keep them. And yes, and that's so why. <clears throat> And don't keep them in, in, in understanding the nature of a vow that is a binding. I mean, something that you, you, you get bind, that you have to fulfill. Mm -hmm. What about if you are not capable to fulfill it? That, that's when the problem comes. That's why they discourage the people. In fact, we heard the sages saying in, in, in one of the uh, books, uh, you know, on the Talmud, in, in Baba Metzia 49 says, let your ear in nay, both be sedic, righteous. That's very interesting because it looks well, it's very similar to what Yeshua said. Now comes the discussion. Who say it first, Yeshua or the Talmud? It's very difficult to determine. I will say Yeshua say it first. Yeah, that's what I would you think. Know, we don't have any, any other means to prove that the Talmud say it first. Because the gospel is uh, um, older than the Talmud. So let your year and nay both be said. Righteous. And another text says, the year of the righteous is year, and their no is no. That means Rabbi and Ruth and 3.18, the Talmud. So these words are similar to Yeshua said in Matthew chapter 5, let your statement be yes or no, no. Anything beyond this is of evil. Now we know that there are plenty of fine print in Yeshua's day, just as they're in, in ours. You know, they attempt to make, a, make it appear as though once was previously taken a vow, 
when in reality the person has no intention to keep it was a problem then as it's now so Yeshua have to criticize that and says no may your no be no and your yes be yes but Julia you know like myself there's a lot of people <clears throat> as they're finding the Lord or trying to find the Lord or you know things happen you know uh, they make the vows fully intending on keeping them but because of their weaknesses they can't keep them Mm -hmm. It's not like they make them just to make them. They really want to do some, they really want God to help them out of some horrible uh, situation. And, and they, you know, say they'll never get in the situation again or whatever, but, and they don't intend on getting in there. So it's not like they make a vow and say, Oh, I'm not going to keep it. It's just that they're not strong enough to keep it. Yeah. So, Rabbi Yehuda says, he who says, Jerusalem, you know, in making a vow, he says, he has to say nothing. He who says an offering, a whole offering, a meal offering, a sin offering, a, a thing offering, peace offering, be what I eat with you, he is bound. So, if the person says, this rabbi says, I swear for Jerusalem, it's nothing. But if the person says, I, I sin, I swear with a sin offering, he is bound. You know, uh, now uh, this rabbi consider a vow made it like Jerusalem, nothing to bind them. Most likely because Jerusalem was too uh, uh, nondescript. But Yeshua criticized that in Matthew uh, chapter 23, he says, let's go there. He says, woe to you blind guide who says whoever swears by the temple it is nothing so in this case we can prove that yes at that time what the Talmud says they were swearing by the temple and if you're swearing by Jerusalem it's nothing it says but whoever swears by the goal of the temple he is obligated to perform it okay? oh that's a foolish thing <laughs> so Yeshua says Fools and blind, for which is greater, the goal or the temple that sanctifies the goal? Mm. He criticizes that. Yeah. And again, in Matthew chapter 5, he says, he says, again, you have heard that it was said to those who you, you shall not swear falsely, but shall perform your oath to the Lord. And Yeshua says, but, and here again comes this word, but, and with, with, which I think I don't I didn't read I didn't read this in Greek, but I think it's kai. And it's a really difficult word to translate because it can mean but or end. But let's say he says, but but I said to you, do not swear at all. Neither for he by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it, it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem. For it is the city of the great king. Nor shall you swear by uh, your head, because you cannot make one hair white or black. Not let your ye uh, but let your yes be yes and your no, no. For whatever is more than this, uh, this is from, from the evil one. So the people make uh, swear for the temple because you know that it, it's too hard to say, I swear by God. But Yeshua says, no, because the temple uh, uh, is his, uh, uh, what he says, do not swear by neither heaven because it's at the throne, because they use that, nor for uh, Jerusalem, not even for your head because it's not yours either. <laughs> What he's saying here, and I think this is the point of interpretation of Mashiach, of this text, Shua HaMashiach, is you don't need to serve by anything, but be a man, a woman of one word. If you say yes, it's because you're going to obey and fulfill that. If you say no, it's because indeed you're going to do it. That means if you swear, if you say whatever, else and you don't fulfill comes from the evil one period if you're going to do it 
Then do it. Do not promise something that you're not going to fulfill. How many promises we, we do in haste? You know, I had to do things and promise things that then I regret, but I had to do it. You know, uh, I think it's in books, chapter and Psalms, chapter one, that says that blessed is that one who fulfill what he promised, even uh, uh, when it's not profit for him, when, when, when it's not. Uh, 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 yeah, he might have, he might have sacrificed her to the temple. I can hear you. I'm sorry. Uh, Pam was asking about where the, uh, who was it that made the, the oath that, that he would, he would sacrifice whatever he first saw when he got back and it was his daughter that came to greet him. Yeah, Jeff, we said we give that example. Jeff and your judges chapter 11. Yeah. And then his daughter came. But now when they, to sacrifice her, that wasn't, he didn't have to kill her. He gave her to the, to the temple or something. Yeah, yeah, that's a discussion that I was saying. Yeah, it's a discussion right there. Um, you know, some people say, well, he didn't sacrifice that because, you know, sac human sacrifices for God. No. But uh, indeed, probably he dedicated his daughter to the service of the temple. He can be, you know. And she would never, she wouldn't be at home. He wouldn't be with her and. You know, it was a separation for him because he really had to give her never marry. and she could never marry. Yeah, that's why she makes a, that um, like saying bye bye with his uh, with her uh, daughters of Jerusalem when she was uh, lamenting with the daughters of Jerusalem, the virgins of Jerusalem, as the text says, probably because of that, because she said, well, I cannot marry it anymore, you know. So it's a it's a good text for discussion, you know. It's a good text for for a a future study, you know. Um, I um I go more with the part that says that he just consecrated his daughter. I'm going, I'm looking for a text here, sorry. It's Psalm 15, verse 4. Let me see, Psalm 15. It's a very, very uh, uh, good text for this topic. I'm sorry, no, it's not that one. Well, it says in, in, in that fulfill his promise, even when, when he got, uh, I says, yeah, in whose eyes, blessed is the man in whose eyes a, a vile person is despised, but he honors those who fear the Lord. He who swears by his own hurt and does not change. That we need to fulfill whatever we promise. It doesn't matter if it hurts us. That's what uh, the spirit of, I think, what Yeshua is saying here. The may you yes, be yes, and your no, be uh, no. Okay. Now, another uh, point here is the husband or father who annuls a vow. You know, the ability for a husband or father to annul a vow taken by a wife or a daughter may indicate a number of things. Uh, what it does not indicate, however, is a general inferiority of women, as some people said, you know, that means, you know, the Bible is a chauvinistic, it shows the inferiority of women and everything now. No, that's not true. Men are able to make equally bad or foolish vows that are, um, as are women. However, the focus of our current parasha in this regard is not that women regularly make foolish vows, and that therefore they must be constantly under supervision in regards of vows, but the woman must be protected from the legal ramifications yes. of a, wrong, a wrongful vow. So that the purpose of this is the authority is to protect the wife and a daughter. The authority given to men 
is not to uh, rule, but to uh, protect. Let's see Ephesians. Ephesians says, Wives, submit to your own husband as to the Lord, for the husband is head of the wife, as also Christ, or Mashiach, is the head of the church, the Keilah, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Mashiach, to Christ, so let the wife be to their own husbands in everything. So in our portion um, today, where the father has the authority to notify a vow, or the husband has that authority, it's not because of, um, it's violating the rights of the woman not to speak or say something. No, it's actually in the context of that time to protect them from the consequences of a wrong uh, vow. You want to say something, Judy? Yeah, uh, yeah, that's how I got it too, because when you read on, you find out that the man has to provide for the woman, even if he divorces her, he has to provide for her in a, such a way uh, to protect her so that she won't just be out on the street. They can't just divorce them and, and <laughs> not take care of them. God wanted to take care of them, even though the men could do that. Yeah. Amen. Also in Colossians says, children, obey your parents mm -hmm. in all things, for this is well pleasing to them. Amen. Now, is that is any question? You have any question? Is that the difference clear between a vow and an oath? The vow is conditionally, you know, when you say, Lord, if you do that to me, then I will do this. Okay. If then, that's the vow, according to the Bible or uh, nether. Now, the oath, uh, Shavuah. It's different. It's, it's when you say something, but you swear for something, which Yeshua says you better. Don't swear for nothing. May your yes be yes and your no be no. So he prevents us and discourages the people to do that, to swear. And he said, don't swear for anything because the people said, no, I, I, if, I don't, if I swear for God, it's, it's, it's bad. But if I do it for the temple, it's not that bad. Like the rabbi said, Yeshua says, no, it's the same. I mean, you cannot mock God, you know, like I trick you, God, you know, I didn't, I didn't swear for you in your name, but I swear for the temple, which is the same, you know, but you will not notice. No, <laughs> the Bible says that God cannot be mocked. Yeah. And Yeshua dis discouraged that attitude, says, no, do not swear. Just may your yes be yes and your no be no. Is that clear? Yes, yes. What? Judy? Yes, say it's, it's clear for me, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me finish with this. And Ephesians and Ecclesiastes says something. Ecclesiastes says something. It says, guard your steps when you go to the house of God. Go near to listen rather than to offer the sacrifice of fools who do not know that they do wrong. Do not be quick with your mouth. Do not be hasty in your heart to utter anything before God. God is in heaven and you are on earth. So let your words be few. A dream comes when, when there are many cares and many words mark the speech of a fool. When you make a vow to God, do not delay to fulfill it. He has no pleasure in fools. Fulfill your vow. Amen. So let's be careful when we are in distress. Lord, if you do this, I promise you, Lord, you know, if you do that, just don't delay to fulfill it. Go and do it and fulfill it. Um, I was telling my kids that, that sometimes the people do things and they think, ah, oh, God doesn't see because you see I committed this and nothing happens. I was telling my kids, do not think in that way. Don't think that God uh, be mocked, that, that he can be mocked. He just keeps silence. 
the fact that we don't have like in the old times that is a thunder will come from heaven or lightning and struck whomever sinned. The fact that we don't have those kind of things, that doesn't mean that he doesn't like things. Because the people used to say, you know, that's in the Old Testament. But no, we have a case in the New Testament that somebody didn't fulfill what they promised. And what happened? They died. Yeah. Yeah. What's the name of this couple? You remember? It was um, Ananias and Sapphira? No. Yes. Ananias yeah. and Sapphira. Sapphira. And they were uh, said that they were going to sell their land and give all the money. But, you know, they could have kept, they could have said, hey, I'm going to sell the, the land and keep part of it and give y'all part. And that would have been fine. But they said they was going to give it all. Yeah. So they didn't fulfill what they were talking and something that. And that's in the age of the grace, brothers and sisters. You know, say, oh, that was, uh, that happened in the Old Testament, but now we're under the grace. Well, that happens under the grace, if you want to call it that way. So let's, de- let's be careful with that, you know. Just the fact that we don't see something happen in these days, for whatever reason, I don't know why it's not happening, but for whatever reason, it, it, I think it, that happened in, that day, in those days because of the proclamation of the gospel. And we see uh, those signs, the big signs of wonders at the beginning because of the declaration of the gospel. You know, the Lord uh, back up his gospel with those signs of wonders. Today, we don't see that those many, you know, uh, at least not in front of every, a lot of people, you know. People say, well, we have healings today and everything. Yes, but not like those in the times of the apostles, you know. So... The fact that we don't see those signs and, and, and wonders like people dying for not fulfilling their oath like in the, in the old days or in the times of Yeshua. The fact that we don't have that today doesn't mean that God didn't see from heaven. Have you heard that, that new song that is called The God Who Sees? Uh-huh. The young woman sings it, you know, talking about, started off with Hagar, I think, and um, but he, she goes through the different people um, that cried out to God or even didn't cry out to God, you know. Um, but she's, you know, she was singing, saying that God sees all. Yeah. So he says, it's continuous. Yeah, he sees everything. And, 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 and that's what I say. He says, uh, he keeps silence, you know. Mm-hmm. The same God that, that gave us the commandment of all. And he says, do not delay and fulfill it. It's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. Yeah. So what makes us think that we can mock him? In, in the book of Ecclesiastes continues, chapter 5, it says in verse 5, it says, it is better not to make a vow than to make one and not fulfill it. Yes. Do not let your mouth lead you into sin. And do not protest to the temple messenger. Why, uh, uh, messenger? My vow was a mistake. My vow was a mistake. Why should God be angry at what you say and destroy the work of your hands? You see, destroy the work of your hands. So some people say, well, I don't see nothing wrong with storing and make a vow and not fulfill it. And then, when they see that they don't prosper, that the work of their hands don't prosper and they don't travel financially or whatever, it can be because of that. Like in the book of Proverbs says, you know, be angry and destroy the work of your hands. Verse 7, much dreaming and many words are meaningless. Therefore, fear God. So it's, it's, it's a really good advice that Ecclesiastes gave us, it's better not to make a vow than to make one and not fulfill it. Mm-hmm. It's better not to make. It's better not to speak. And other Proverbs says that when we don't speak much, when we keep silent, we are count as sages, advice. You know? So... Let's be careful with that attitude. Let's be careful with the vows we make. And let's be careful uh, with our words. Promise something to somebody and then don't fulfill it. You know, I'll give you something, brother. I'll be there, brother, with you. Call me anytime. Then the person calls at 3 a.m. Ah, I'm sleeping or, you know. 
Be careful, let's be careful with what we promise to our brothers and sisters. Let's be careful, let's be careful not to swear in vain to the Lord. Not from heaven, no. I swear by my, no. Or for your mom, or for your daughter, your children, no. Don't swear for anything. You don't need to swear. If you're a right, a good believer, you don't need to swear. Just say, yes, I will do it. Or yes, I did it. Or no, I didn't. I'd be afraid to, to no. uh, swear according, you know, with your children, because you could lose your children, you know, if you didn't keep the, you know, I, I would be afraid to do that. That's really tempting God if you may, if you swear by your children or swear by. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's or when, yes, that's, that's difficult. You know, I swear by, no, by nothing. Mm -mm. It's difficult. It's difficult when you pronounce those kind of words and the Lord keep us and protect us from it. You know, or when you promise something to your kids and don't fulfill it, you will lose your authority. You know, let's, Fulfill what we promise and be careful with what we speak and say before before the throne of the Lord, you know. And as the author of Ecclesiastes says here, therefore, fear God. Fear God. Amen. 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 Any other question? Connection? I was, I was just going to throw in our, uh, what we've been talking about. You said with your children or whatever, but if we don't swear, but we put in there, we will do this if it's the Lord's will. If you what? If it's the Lord's will. Well, that's not a swear, though. You know, if you say. Well, that's I what I'm saying. I'm, yeah. what I'm saying instead of swearing, just say, you know, we'll be over tomorrow. I promise you, you don't have to promise you say if it's the Lord's will. You don't have to swear to him that you're gonna be there tomorrow. Oh uh, yeah, that's that's another thing. Yes, yes. It's um it's the same attitude, you know, it's the same it's the same spirit of swearing on, on, on not swearing over what Yeshua said. Yeshua says, do not swear over the temple over because you know, do not swear over uh, the heavens because it's where the his throne is, do not swear because of the earth, do not swear over your head. Is the same spirit of what I think is James, the one that says that, do not say, tomorrow I will do this, and tomorrow I will do that, but say, Lord willing, tomorrow I will do this, you know. But it's the, it's, it's the same uh, spirit of humbleness, but it's different occasion. Let me explain that. And you're, and you're really going to, if you can, you're going to do it. I mean, it's not yes. like, oh, I'm going to do it if God wills and then walk away and say, well, God didn't will it. But that's not, the, that's not it. Yeah, uh, no, no, no. It's in the sense of uh, the arrogance that we can say, you know what, well, I can do whatever I want and tomorrow I will do this, not knowing what, what tomorrow will bring, you know. And, and, and the, uh, the book of James, I think it is, encourages us to have the humbleness, you know. Always say, Lord, Lord willing, you know. You know, yeah, well, I know we're probably all guilty of, yeah, it's, it's for intentionally, it's, yeah, like I'd say, Julio, I'm gonna call you tomorrow, and something might come up, and if I don't call you, I mean, my intentions were to call you, but yeah, but that, 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 wasn't, a swear. Oh. that wasn't a swear, but you know, you try to do what you say you're gonna do. Yeah, yeah, but uh, but it's better it's better to say you know I, I maybe call you or not, or I I will call you or not you know, or if the person said I will pray for can you pray for that I'll pray for that you know, and yeah we 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 uh, fail in that one a lot. I decided to take note or pray for the person right away. Can you pray for me for that? I'll pray for that. No, okay, let's pray right now, and yeah. that way you will not forgive forget to do it or something just do it right away <clears throat> because how many times we say yes i'm gonna do that brother i'll pray for that and we never do it right. you see 13 to 16 is 13 to 16 let me read it to you it's james chapter 4 uh, and uh, 13 and 16 says come now you who say today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a city and spend a year there buy and sell and make a profit whereas you don't 
you do know what will happen tomorrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Instead, you, sh you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we shall live and do this or that. But now you boast in arrogance, in your arrogance, and so all such boasting is evil. So it's different when you do an arrogance. You know, I will do, do I'll, I'll do this and I'll do that. And if the Lord wills, it's different when you promise a person, I will go there because you're promising something. You see, it's not the same thing. When you want to do something, say, if the Lord wants, I'll do this. If the Lord wills, Lord willing, we're going to do this and that. Lord willing, I'll be there. You know, Lord willing, Lord willing. But if you promise something to somebody, just make sure if you're able to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, and you know what? Uh, uh, yes, I will be there, or or uh, I um, I promise you, or uh, not promise you, but uh, uh, you know, the person says, "Can you come? Can you do that for me?" You can say yes or no. You know, sometimes it's difficult to learn how to say no. Mm. Some of us are difficult, you know, to say no. I can't, or no, I won't. I don't. I don't want to do that. There are some people like me that are difficult to say no. And sometimes people will take advantage of you because of that, because you don't say no to, to people. And then you give your word and you have to be there just because you say it. Sometimes say no. Saying no will save you from a lot of, will keep you from a lot of problems. Well, what would, what would a person swear to, not listen like if they went to court to swear to tell the truth? But would be a good for instance that someone would have to swear. Nothing now, right? I mean, we're not supposed to swear now, right? In the in the court. The court's different, though. Yeah, right? the court's different. I think the rabbis established a halakha that if you go to court, um, you should testify, and you know about that, and. Well, you know what? That could be wrong because you are putting your hand on the Bible and raising your right hand up. I wonder. I mean, I've never thought about it till just now, but I wonder if the Almighty is pleased with that. I don't know. That's a good I don't know question. because Yeshua says, do not swear, you know, for this and that. And, you know, first, I don't know if the people who put the Bible there, they, uh, they are uh, uh, aware of what they're doing, you know is they put that because of the uh, matter of conscience conscience you know they just need to um have a register register of what you said yeah i have seen them say i've i've seen actually people in court that wouldn't put their hand on the bible but they would promise to tell the truth but they wouldn't swear on the bible yeah because there's a lot of atheists that they say well i don't believe in the bible so i don't you know, I don't, I'm not going to use the Bible. So they use another book or other things. You know, it's just a means. I think it's just a protocol that they use to do that. You know, because they swear. You swear for what? I mean, or whom? You know, you should just tell the truth. So, uh, but if you are forced to testify in the court uh, or do in court, you're, you should tell the truth you know, for the sake of justice and for the sake of the truth. The truth is just only one. So I think that the rabbis, uh, they deliver legislation about that. I think we, we spoke one day about that. Okay, guys. Do you have any other questions? Yeah. I enjoyed the service this morning. Okay. Glad to have you back. Yeah, you. you and your family. Okay. You I'll guys must have, uh, have a, you, you should have a, uh, let me see, Shabbat Shalom, okay. Okay, guys, I hope you have a great rest of Shabbat, and may the Lord keep you and bless you. Amen. Okay. Shabbat Thank Shalom. You. Shabbat yeah. Shalom. Thank you. Shabbat Shalom.